Hi, I'm Richie Zellon, and if you are a jazz improvisation student, in this video I'm going to share with you a valuable learning strategy that can shorten the steep learning curve and spare you from lots of unnecessary confusion. I call it the bird blues diet. You see, many new jazz guitar students will attempt to start learning to improvise using a 32 measure standard such as, say, Autumn Leaves, which contains at least five different chord types and requires various different scales. For the newbie with very little or no previous experience playing jazz, this often results in frustration and serious information overload, which in turn can lead to giving up altogether. Now, no matter what method you use, I have to admit that learning jazz improvisation, especially on guitar, is no walk in the park. It is definitely a long-term pursuit, and believe me, anyone who tells you otherwise is lying to you. Having said that, there are strategies that can minimize the initial confusion and help you reach your goal in a quicker and more direct way. And that is why I want to talk about the importance of bird blues. So what is bird blues, some of you might ask, and why on earth do you call it a diet? Well. It is used in reference to the chord progression Charlie Parker wrote for his composition, Blues for Alice. I've always felt that if chord progressions were edible, bird blues would constitute the perfect meal. It's loaded with all the food groups we require, and at the same time, it is low in carbs. <laughs> In this analogy, I am using the food groups to symbolize the incredible variety of chords featured here. We've got the major seventh chord, the minor seventh chord, the minor seventh flat five, the regular dominant seventh, and the alter dominant chord. This, in essence, calls for an equal variety of scales when improvising. Now, I mentioned it is also low in carbs. <laughs> and what I meant by that is that all these chords are featured in a measly 12 measures. Now, contrast that to the 32 measure tunes you normally have to learn to cover that much harmony. Simply put, Bird Blues has most of the harmony you will encounter in a great percentage of standards in just a fragment of the space. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. This guy initially mentions Autumn Leaves as being problematic to start out with due to the amount of chords it has and then proposes Bird Blues, which has even more chords just because it only lasts 12 measures. Well, if you were thinking that, I can't blame you. So let me clarify. When I proposed Bird Blues, I designate it as the culmination of studies in a period of at least one year. During that year, I build up to that progression by starting with just one chord and gradually adding to it until we have the final progression of Bird Blues. The Bird Blues Diet is a new paradigm to teach jazz improvisation, and it is employed by a select few teachers who have experienced quicker and better results through it with their students. This is also the system I personally adopted a number of years ago after years of teaching other methods for decades in several music schools. I have to say that the results, at least for me as a teacher, have been staggering, especially when followed by rhythm changes in a second phase. So if you're interested in knowing how I teach improvisation by breaking this progression down to its simplest form and gradually building it back up, please stick around. Here comes the Bird Blues Diet. <laughs> 
Well, let me get started by saying that the goals of this method are geared towards establishing a foundation in linear improvisation and not so much in the development of your chordal vocabulary. That means that you can simultaneously be learning other chord progressions to any 32 measure standard of your choice. Actually, it is recommended that you do so. You see, it is one thing to learn how to comp over a complex standard, but an entirely different story to actually improvise over it. In the beginning stages of learning jazz, you are always going to learn to play a chord progression, even with several new voicings much, much quicker than learning how to solo over it. So I want to make it clear that the fact that you are going to be initially stuck learning jazz improv over a 12-bar blues in no way means that you can't at the same time learn to comp over your favorite jazz standards. So now that I've gotten that disclaimer out of the way, let me show you how I deconstruct bird blues down to its foundation and gradually start introducing new harmonic elements until arriving back at the original progression. This, by the way, is the procedure I employ in volume one of my one-year online course entitled The Bebop Guitar Improv Series. Once the student acquires a solid foundation here, he or she is ready to start volume two, which focuses on rhythm changes and other essential progressions. And yes, I will be posting a future lesson on why we need to supplement the bird blues diet with rhythm changes. Anyhow, in the meantime, I have placed a link down below in the info section where those interested can get more info on these courses. So to proceed, let me improvise over a few choruses of bird blues for those of you that aren't familiar with the progression and so you can get a better picture of where we are headed. As I play, you will see the chord changes on the screen and that way you will have a better idea of what it is that we are deconstructing right after this little uh, preview. Now we are going to examine three versions of a 12 bar blues and we are going to introduce new chords with each iteration. For our first version we are going to make sure we can improvise over a traditional 1-4-5 based blues. I'm sure most of you can go to town using a minor pentatonic over the entire progression, but what you want to do here is learn how to play over the changes using a different seven note scale for each chord. And in this instance, we are going to use three mixolydian scales. This is the initial phase in which we need to establish a strong foundation using various improvisational techniques and principles such as learning how to use each chord's arpeggio, its passing tones, chromatic notes, upper extensions, uh, smooth voice leading at the point of chord change, and many other fundamentals. And let me say that this is much easier to accomplish using just one chord and scale rather than starting out with a handful of them. So let me play over this first variation and you will see on the screen how it compares to the bird blues progression.
we master all these rudiments, we are ready for a second iteration where we introduce a new chord family and scale. This is where we start learning to play over minor seventh chords using the Dorian scale. This usually takes less time to master than with the first iteration because the only difference between the Mixolydian and Dorian is one note. Instead of playing a major third, we now play a minor third. And the beauty of it is that most of the fundamentals we mastered in the first iteration are ready to be applied here. You can even adapt any vocabulary you learned in the previous phase to the new harmony. To find out more about how this is done, I recommend that you watch my video lesson entitled Recycle Your Jazz Slicks Using Modal Conversion. So, with each iteration, there are just a few minor changes to take care of and we are getting closer to our goal. After getting comfortable with the Dorian and Mixolydian using different fingerings and improvisational techniques, I'd like to add some altered dominance which call for the use of the Super Locrian. This is a fairly difficult scale but really adds a more sophisticated jazz flavor to the mix and we can now add a dominant over the sixth degree of the key which is a harmonic element we will encounter frequently when playing standards. So to sum it up, in this iteration we are using three different scales, the Mixolydian, the Dorian, and the Super Locrian. Listen for the new chords. So these are the three major blues iterations I use to prepare my students with the basic rudiments to play bird blues. Usually after this I like to teach some minor blues in order to introduce the minor 7 flat 5 chord. And this is also the second chord in bird blues and uses the Locrian scale which is used in minor 2-5 cadences. So at this point, the student now has knowledge of four different scales, the Mixolydian, the Dorian, the Super Locrian, and the Locrian. Now, in order to play bird blues, you only need to learn two additional scales, the Ionian or major scale and the Aeolian or natural minor. And these you can acquire by simply changing one note in two of the scales you already know. For the Ionian, you raise the seventh on the already familiar Mixolydian, and for the Aeolian, you flat the sixth on the already familiar Dorian. So once you can improvise over bird blues, you will have the understanding of how to do so over most 32 measure standards. Again, this is because the progression tightly packs into 12 measures, all the most important chords and harmonic cadences you are bound to encounter when playing jazz standards. I am referring to both minor and major 2-5 cadences, the 1-6-2-5 cadence, and tritone substitutions as well. But of course, if you are totally new to jazz, you might not understand what I am talking about. All I can say is that if you've been having a hard time finding a direct and well-structured method to learn jazz, what I described here may just be the answer for you. Well, 
that concludes my introduction to the Bird Blues Diet. Hope you enjoyed it and can use this information to further your playing. And if you feel like you can use some detailed guidance in your learning journey, please check out my online bebop guitar improv series where I walk you through all the exercises necessary to successfully master the procedure that I've described previously. Other than that, I would love to hear your comments and feel free to post any questions you may have. What is the meaning of life? Where do babies come from? <laughs> Finally, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and be sure to click on the bell icon so you won't miss anything. Have fun and see you in the next video.